In today's class, I will be discussing some more solutions of second order differential equations. I will be talking mostly about homogeneous equations and a very little bit about non-homogeneous equations. So, let us just remind ourselves what we know about uh, second order differential equations. So, we said that we can write as a general second order differential equation, second order linear differential equation as uh, in this form A of x y prime plus b of x y is equal to c of x. This is uh, if c of x is, is not equal to 0, this is called non-homogeneous c of x not equal to 0. If, if you have c of x equal to 0, then you have something like this y double prime plus a of x y prime plus b of x y equal to 0, this is homogeneous and we saw that for homogeneous equations you have uh, basis functions. Okay. So, you can write uh, you, you can write your general solution as a linear combination of basis functions c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 where, where y 1 and y 2 are solution are solutions of the differential equation. So, so, homogeneous differential equations have this nice feature. Okay. Now, uh, which we which is not there for non-homogeneous equations. So, you can you cannot write this for non-homogeneous equations okay. uh, and uh, you can you can easily verify this for certain non-homogeneous equations. Okay. So, today I want to first start the discussion of a special type of homogeneous linear second order differential equation it is those with constant coefficients. Okay. So, what do you mean by constant coefficients? So, so, so I will say second order linear homogeneous equations with constant coefficients. So, all you will do for constant coefficients is that you will say this a of x and b of x are constants. These are these are in general functions of x, but if these functions are constants, then you will get a second order homogeneous uh, equation with constant coefficient. So, you will have y double prime plus a times y prime plus b times y equal to 0, a and b are constants. Okay, so, a and b are constants and obviously y is a function of x. Okay. Now, uh, how do you solve how do you solve such a differential equation? Okay. Now, uh, again there are uh, you can do this using uh, the system of differential equations. You can convert it into two, uh, two first order differential equations and then you can use matrix methods. Okay. Alternatively, you can directly do this in a using trial solutions. So, you try a solution y equal to e raise to lambda x okay. and uh, I did not I did not put a constant before this because you can put any constant and it will still be a solution. Okay. So, since it is a homogeneous equation I can always multiply it by constant and get another another solution, but so, so, so I will just put y equal to e to the lambda x I would not bother putting the constant in front. So, if y equal to e to the lambda x then you know that y prime equal to lambda times e to the lambda x and y double prime equal to lambda square e to the lambda x. Okay. And now, if you substitute these in the differential equation, okay, then you get what do you get when you substitute this in this. So, y double prime is lambda square e to the lambda x plus a lambda e to the lambda x plus b e to the lambda x equal to 0 and uh, and uh, since this is this is true for all x i can i can cancel this e to the lambda x term i get a relation lambda square plus a lambda plus b equal to 0 and a and b are constants so this implies lambda equal to negative a 
plus minus square root of a square minus 4 b divided by 2. Okay, so, it is a quadratic equation and these are the solutions. So, what I can write? I can write uh, let us say let us say I call it uh, lambda 1 as minus a plus square root of a square minus 4 b divided by 2 and if I write uh, lambda 2 as minus a minus square root of a square minus 4 b by 2. Okay. Then my I have two solutions, I have two solutions. So, I have uh, y 1 is equal to e to the lambda 1 x and y 2 equal to e to the lambda 2 x. Okay. Now, if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are distinct, okay, then these two solutions are linearly independent. Okay. So, so, if lambda 1 not equal to lambda 2, okay, then solutions are linearly independent. Okay. And if they are linearly independent, then you can write a general solution y is equal to c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 is a general solution. Okay. Now, uh, this is this is very nice because uh, we we converted our differential equation into a simple quadratic equation okay, and we know the roots of the quadratic equation and we can immediately find the solutions. If they are not linearly independent, if these if lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, what do you do? Okay, well, well it is not too hard, you can you can find one solution, okay, but, but you learnt in the last class that once you have one solution, you can find the second solution by variation of parameters. Okay. So, uh, so the second solution, so, is, so if I just have 1 y 1, I can find a linearly independent solution by using method of variation of parameters. So, I will just write, so if lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal to lambda, okay, then y 1 equal to e to the lambda x okay, and uh, we can find linearly independent y 2 by variation of parameters. Okay, what we did in the last class with the with those u and so on. Okay. So, if you go ahead and do this, then uh, what you will get is that you will find that uh, this will lead to y 2 is equal to x e to the lambda x. Okay. So, the general solution y is equal to c 1 e to the lambda x plus c 2 x e to the lambda x. Okay. And these two are linearly independent solutions and that is what you can do. And you can easily verify this. Okay. So, I will just, I'll just say that you can verify this verify this uh, using the methods that we did in the last class. So, you write your y 2 as u times y 1 okay, and then you substitute in the differential equation and uh, after all this cancellation and everything, you will find that uh, u u prime equal to 0 and so u will be equal to constant capital U and so and, and after that since u is a constant, your, uh, your small u just becomes equal to x. So, and so I can write y 2 as x e to the lambda x. What this shows is that if you have a homogeneous equation with constant coefficients, okay, then you know the solutions, you can always find two linearly independent solutions. Okay. Now, let us look at the nature of the solutions. So, uh, so the solutions we said that you, you have uh, lambda is equal to negative a plus minus square root of a square minus 4 b divided by 2. So, if a square minus 4 b is greater than 0, strictly greater than 0, okay, then we have two real roots okay, two real roots that means uh, lambda 1 and lambda 2 are real 
these are real numbers okay then the solution y is equal to c1 e to the lambda 1 x plus c2 e to the lambda 2 x is exponential okay so it's it's basically a sum of exponential functions so so it involves two exponential functions and it's a sum of these two exponential functions and uh, you know lambda 1 can be positive or negative if it is positive then it is exponentially increasing if it is negative it is exponentially decreasing okay now uh, if a square minus 4b is less than 0 okay then two complex roots i'll just call the two roots as lambda 1 equal to lambda real plus i times lambda imaginary okay so lambda i is lambda is 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 the imaginary part which is basically uh, this term the second part of this of the solution okay lambda real is basically minus a by 2 okay and uh, similarly lambda 2 will be exactly the same lambda real minus i times lambda imaginary where i'll just emphasize again so lambda real is equal to minus a by 2 and lambda imaginary is equal to 4b minus a square square root of that divided by 2 okay so since since a square minus 4b is less than 0 so 4b minus a square is greater than 0 so the imaginary part is just this okay and that is multiplied by the by i okay so the two complex roots have this feature okay so then so then i can write my y as uh, c1 e to the now now lambda 1 will have a lambda real plus i lambda imaginary so i'll just take the lambda real times x okay and then i have i have e to the i lambda i times x and in the second case for my second function again i'll have c2 e to the lambda r x and e to the minus lambda i x okay so i can write this as e to the lambda r x c1 e to the lambda i times lambda i x plus c2 e to the i times lambda i x okay and and again uh, i i want to emphasize that both lambda r and lambda i are real quantities okay so this is basically an exponential multiplying uh, multiplying an exponential of imaginary of imaginary number okay and and you know that exponential of imaginary number can be written as a linear combination of, of sines and cosines so you know that uh, e to the i lambda i x can be written as sin of lambda i x plus i times cosine of lambda i x okay so this is a general property of a, of an imaginary number okay so you can write it as a sum of sines and cosines so so essentially what you have here is uh, these functions look like a combination of sines and cosines so what you have is an exponential function multiplying an oscillating function okay so you have an exponential function multiplying an oscillating function so so you have an exponential multiplying an oscillatory function okay so this is a case when a square minus 4b is less than 0 Okay, so a square minus 4b is greater than 0 then you have only exponential functions if you have a square minus 4b less than 0 you have exponential multiplying an oscillatory function and what about if a square minus 4b equal to 0 a square minus 4b equal to 0 okay then uh, then the solutions will just be it will look like uh, e to the lambda x and you have c1 e to the lambda x plus c2 x e to the 
lambda x. So, you have only one root ok. So, both the roots become the same ok because uh, lambda equal to lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal to minus a by 2 ok. So, so the solutions just look like this ok. So, lambda is just minus a by 2. So, you have e to the minus a by 2 x ok and you have c 1 plus c 2 x. So, so the other linearly independent solution is just x e to the lambda x. Okay. Now, now, now these, uh, these ideas that we said here are actually seen in a very practical situation which is called the damped harmonic oscillator. So, what is the damped harmonic oscillator? So, the damped harmonic oscillator the is has satisfies a differential equation y double prime plus 2 eta y prime plus omega square y equal to 0 ok. So, so if, if you did not have this middle term then it would just be a simple harmonic oscillator y double prime plus omega square y equal to 0, but this is a damping term that is there ok. And, uh, and I should mention that eta and omega square are both greater than 0 ok. So, now, now this is exactly of this form that we had before, this is exactly of the form of this second order differential equation with constant coefficient. So, it has exactly this form instead of a you have 2 eta and instead of b you have omega square ok. And uh, the reason we put omega square is because we want this quantity to be strictly greater than 0 ok. Now, there are 3 possible cases. So, case 1 is when is when uh, what you have is uh, you, you can say that uh, it is uh, square of this. So, 2 eta square minus 4 omega square is, is uh, let me say greater than 0 ok. So, in other words this will so I can cancel the 4 and what I will get is eta square is greater than omega square or eta is greater than omega. So, you have the case. So, if eta is greater than omega then this quantity is greater than 0 and uh, what we said if this quantity is greater than 0 you have exponential solutions ok. So, so the solutions are, are exponential ok and uh, you will recall the solutions look like e to the lambda 1 x and e to the lambda 2 x where lambda 1 and lambda 2 have this form. I will write it explicitly. So, lambda lambda equal to. So, in this case you get uh, minus eta plus square root of eta square minus omega square ok. And you have so, so you have plus minus this ok. And since eta is greater than omega ok, then this solution will will be purely exponential. Okay. So, uh, so your solution looks like e to the lambda 1 x plus e to the lambda 2 x ok. So, so this is the first case. Now, notice that uh, if eta is greater than 0 and if eta is greater than omega then you know that uh, this the, the root where this is plus ok. So, this quantity will always be less than eta ok. So, this, this lambda will always be negative. So, what you have is exponentially decaying solutions. So, I can write this as exponentially decaying solutions or you say that the solution is over damped ok. So, so this is called an over damped oscillator ok. In case 2 you have uh, eta less than omega ok and now your solutions are uh, now you have exponential multiplied by by this uh, exponential of imaginary. So, exponential multiplied by oscillating ok. So, these are so in this case your solutions are actually you you have both these oscillations and you have the exponential functions. So, in this case you say that the solution is under damped. Okay. And uh, what does this solution look like? So, it will look like 
it look like e to the minus eta x c 1 e to the i omega x plus c 2 e to the minus i omega x. You can verify this, you can verify this just uh, I just wrote exactly what you had in this case ok, L lambda r and lambda i. The third case lambda equal to omega is called as critically damped ok and here the solution looks like uh, solution looks like e to the minus lambda x c 1 plus c 2 x ok. So, basically each of these solutions uh, has a different feature uh, in the first case you just had exponential functions, in the second case you had exponential multiplied by some oscillating functions ok. So, this might look like uh, if you plot this ok, if you plot y as a function of x y as a function of x then uh, what you will get is you have an exponential minus x. So, you have you have this, but then you have oscillation. So, it will look like it will look like oscillations whose amplitude is constantly decreasing decreasing ok. So, this is what happens in the under damped case ok. In the over damped case you just have you do not see any oscillations you just see you just see exponential. So, so, since they are negative exponential you will just see something like this ok. And the critically damped is just at the boundary when you are about to get oscillating solutions ok. So, so you are you do not have oscillating solutions ok, you are just about to get right right uh, when you are going from exponential to this exponential multiplied by oscillating solutions. So, so, so these are well known uh, solutions of the damped harmonic oscillator ok and, uh, and we can see them in a very easy way using, uh, using the solution of the differential equation ok. Now, next I will just uh, mention another type of equation which you can also solve using, uh, using very similar tricks ok. So, this equation has a form, so this is called the Euler Cauchy equation and this has a form x square y double prime plus a which is a constant times x y prime plus b times y equal to 0 ok. Now, notice what I did was when I had a second derivative I multiplied by x square, when I have a first derivative I multiplied by a constant uh, by, by x ok. So, that is what that is what the terms look like. So, uh, if you want you can take the x square in the denominator, but uh, you do not need to do that. Writing it in this form suggests you what the solution should look like ok. So, what should the solution look like? Now, you know that when you take a second derivative of some some power of x, then you get a power of x reduced by 2 ok. So, now, now you are squaring, now you are multiplying by x square, so you will get back to the same power of x ok. So, the trial solution shown here y equal to x raised to m. So, if you try a solution of y equal to x raised to m, then you get y prime is equal to m x raised to m minus 1 and y double prime equal to m m minus 1 x raised to m minus 2. And now, if you substitute in this equation, so x square times y double prime will give you m m minus 1 into x square into x raised to m minus 2. So, all you will get is m m minus 1 into x raised to m ok and plus a. Now, x times y prime is just uh, m times x raised to, now you had m minus 1 and multiplied by x gives you x raised to m and b times y is just b times x raised to m equal to 0 and, y, and by doing this you can see that you can cancel the x raised to m. So, just as in the last case you get an equation m m minus 1 plus a m plus b equal to 0, this is a quadratic equation in m in m ok and uh, I can I can write it explicitly as m square plus m times a 
minus 1 plus b equal to 0. Okay, so, that is the explicit quadratic equation in M. Okay, and uh, whenever you have a quadratic equation, you can have two roots. So, two roots m1 and m2 okay and again you can have the similar case similar case cases so m1 m2 can be both real or it can be both complex both complex complex means they have both a real and an imaginary part and you can have uh, or you can have m1 equal to m2 okay so these are the three cases and uh, i won't do this explicitly but uh, you can see in which case you would get uh, get uh, each of these so you would get both real if if this uh, b square minus uh, so so a a minus 1 square is greater than 4b okay and uh, they will be both complex if a minus 1 square is less than 4b and you will get two coincident roots if a minus 1 whole square equal to 4b okay so these are the conditions in which you will get uh, these solutions and uh, you know what to do if if you get so the so the general solution will look like uh, in the first two cases you can write y is equal to c1 x raised to m1 plus c2 x raised to m2 if m1 is not equal to m2 and if m1 equal to m2 okay then you have to then you find one root and you get the other root by variation of parameters so so if m1 equal to m2 equal to m okay then you say y1 equal to x raised to m okay and you when you solve for y2 using y2 using y2 equal to u times x raised to m u times y1 or u times x raised to m okay so you can do you can make the substitution you can put in the differential equation and you can solve for y2 okay i won't do this okay so but but i'll leave it as an exercise for you to try okay so so try try to solve for y2 okay using the same variation of parameters that we had done in the last class okay so 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 i'll stop this discussion on homogeneous second order differential equations here okay so in the next class i'll tell you what to do if you have a non homogeneous second order differential equation